Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome this morning to discipleship class. Come on in. Join us this morning for a time to grow, to learn, and to mature in the Word of God. So come on in. Join us this morning. We welcome everybody to discipleship class this morning. As you're coming in, let us know who you are, and we welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. Come on in. Let us know who you are as you're joining in this morning. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. So welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome. Um, Let's talk about humility this morning. Let's talk about humility. So we're going to touch on the subject of humility this morning, okay? Let's do that. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, for this morning. Thank you for this day. Thank you for every person that is tuned in. Lord, we look to you. We depend on you. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me, anoint me, use me to help your people. I welcome you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so for those who have your notepads, your notebooks, whatever will have you, your Bible, let's go. All right. So the first thing we want to talk about in regards to humility is that humility, it's all about the heart. It's not about the appearance. To walk in true humility, it must be focused from the heart. It's a, it's a heart matter and not appearance because appearances can be deceiving, but the heart it's where humility belongs. So many people appear to be humble and outside they are prideful inside. And if God revealed their heart, you would see how great the pride really is. Do you hear that? If you look at them on the outside, they may appear humble, but if God really exposed their heart, you can see how prideful a person really is. A humble man knows that of himself, he's imperfect. But only through the blood of Jesus Christ is he made perfect before God. So a real, true, humble person only knows that they are perfect before God solely because of the blood of the Lamb that cleanses them from all of their wickedness. And their faith and their confidence is completely, totally resting in and on Jesus Christ. What he has done for us what he promises us, how he has made a way for us is totally predicated on all of those things. He died for me. That's why I'm alive. He, he redeemed me. That's why I have a new life. He saved me. That's why I'm free. He gave me the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm empowered. In other words, it's nothing because of me. It's all because of him. 
That's what the humble person understands. Okay? And this man knows that only through the help of the Holy Spirit that he's able to do what seems to come so easy. Right? He knows that through the help of the Holy Spirit, and that's why we always give Jesus Christ all the praise. Because we know if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, if it wasn't for Jesus, if it wasn't for the wisdom of God, any good thing that appears to be easy in our life would not be if it wasn't for his help. Thank you. If it wasn't for his help. Humble people don't need to fight for their respect. However, they do fight for peace. Prideful people say, do you know who I am? <laughs> Any of you familiar with that? Prideful people say, do you know who I am? That is the language of the prideful. Do you know who you are dealing with? Do you know who I am? Okay, that's what prideful people say. Now, let's look at um, 1 Samuel 15, 17. Let's turn in your Bibles. 1 Samuel Fifteen, verse 17 and Samuel said when thou was little in thy own sight when thou was when you was a little in your own sight was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel and the Lord anointed you king over Israel when you was little in your own sight. Isn't that good? Yeah. Not when you said, do you know who I am? Right. No, but God raised you. God made you when you were little in your own sight. And that's when God made you king. Saul was the kind of person that God raises to the top because in this verse it says, when you were small in your own sight. And so what Saul went wrong was he began to try to make the man of God, Samuel, to respect him. You're going to respect me. Jeez. You're going to put some respect on my name. But before he was small. And now he's demanding the man of God to respect him. See, the real reason why Saul wanted to worship God was just to look good in the sight of Israel. And before the elders. See that? Saul just wanted to worship God just so he can appear a certain kind of way before the elders and before Israel. It had nothing to do with God. That was pride. Can you imagine that? From the standpoint of that, there was a day when Saul was small in his own eyes, but then he got puffed up. And he got so big headed and he thought he could just do anything he wanted to do, say anything he wanted to say, treat anybody the any way he wanted to treat anybody because he was king, because he had a crown on his head. Because he was decorated with the most finest clothing. He began to try to make the man of God respect him. You're going to show me respect. Do you know who I am? He, he, he was more focused 
on appeasing the people around him than pleasing the God who was watching him. Can you imagine that? Being that amazingly, glamorously dressed as a king, but yet on the inside of your heart, if God was to open it up, it would look like an infestation of snakes and the most creepiest bugs on the planet. And see, that's what pride is like. We're on the outside. You can appear to have all the humility in the world. You can appear to be humble, but reality is on the inside, you are full of dead man's bones. And that was the story of Saul. And you're, you're going to run away from that. You're not going to demand for your pastor to put respect on you. You're not going to lose being small in your own perspective. You're not going to lose that. That's not you. You're not walking around like that. You're not walking around with a with an arrogance about you. You're going to humble yourself. Matter of fact, you're already doing it right now. And you're not going to just worship God on a Sunday. You're not going to just worship God to appease and please the people around you. But you're going to love God for who he is. You're going to love God for who he is. Can somebody just type amen? Glory to God. Now. Now let's go a little further in this here. Let's go a little further in this. How we doing out here, uh, YouTube? Okay, we doing good out here. Good morning, Pastor. Um, uh, Chalk said, wow, yes, sir. Uh, hallelujah. Good morning from Kanisha. Um, Aaron Davis is with me. Hey, good morning, Aaron. Um, Mary, Miss Mary, good morning. That's true, Chalk says. Uh, wow, my God, wow. Okay, people are receiving. Amen, amen. Dominique says, amen. Aaron Davis, amen. And Miss Mary Wright, sir, love God for who he is. Amen. Okay, glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Let me see what's going on on uh, Facebook. Okay. People are saying amen. Uh-huh. I'm not better than anybody. I'm, I, I'm humble, sir. Thank you, Jesus. I'm humbling myself. That's right. That's right. Amen. You guys are blessed, man, to be learning all these things. That's a blessing. It's a blessing because what if you had to live like this and you didn't even know? <laughs> but thank God you have the opportunity to be taught these things. Wow, that's amazing. That's a beautiful thing. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Matthew eleven twenty nine. Let's look at that. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Matthew eleven twenty nine. Okay, um, Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. This is one of my favorite scriptures right here. Mm. Wow. One of my favorite scriptures right here. Mark 11, Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Take my yoke upon you. Take my my yoke upon you. That's how it works. Take my yoke upon you. Put it on put it on your shoulder. Put it on your shoulder. Yep, there you go. Put it on your shoulder. There you go. Take my yoke upon you. Look what he says. 
and learn of me or learn from me. Yep, look at that. I knew that. Right then, the definition, same definition. That's what he's saying. And learn from me. Don't don't take up the cause of the world, the fight for peace. He said, take my cause and learn from me. Watch this. For I am meek. I'm gentle and I'm humble. For I am meek. I am gentle and I am humble. I am gentle. I am humble. Come learn from me. That, thank you, Jesus. You are, you are amazing, sir. And lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So what are we learning here? Uh, do me a favor. Make sure y'all tag somebody. Make sure y'all like somebody. I mean, like, tag somebody on Facebook. Make sure you share. And YouTube, make sure you share and subscribe, please. Thank you. So, what are we learning? Jesus is the perfect example for humility. A lot of people don't believe that because people don't often know how to believe that. People don't know how to believe that. They just kind of just have this blind faith, whatever. But to me, faith is not blind. Faith is very clear. Faith is very intelligent. Faith is very upfront. Faith is very demanding. Faith is very expecting. Faith is very practical. It's very simple. It's very clear. And so Jesus being the perfect example of humility, which means when you look at his life, that's what that's how humility is to be demonstrated. Everything that he did, what he did, how he did it, the way he went about it, how he treated people, when things, the times he didn't speak and say anything. He demonstrated ultimate humility. The times he had self-control, where he began to control himself, uh, the, the times where he could have called for backup to come and destroy, but he didn't. He demonstrated ultimate humility. Jesus is the perfect example of humility. So if anybody out there say, you know what? I wish I had a book on humility. I wish I really knew what it meant, you know, to be humble. That is a plot of the devil. That's what I've, I've come to learn. It's a plot of the enemy to make us overlook all the lessons in the Bible that are clearly written out to us that was given to us by God through Jesus to show us a way in these different areas that we may struggle in. And so if somebody struggled in pride, you can see every answer known to man when it comes to humility through the life of Jesus. Perfect example. Okay, let's take it a step further. Let's go to Philippians chapter two, verse six through seven. Philippians two. Let's see how Jesus was the perfect example. Philippians chapter 2. Uh, verse 6 and 7. 6 and 7. Okay. Who be... Who... It says... Verse five, let's five through seven. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus or Christ Jesus. Verse six, Jesus being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But Jesus made himself of no reputation. And Jesus took upon him the form of a servant. And Jesus was made in the likeness of men, men. And Jesus being found in the fashion as a man, Jesus humbled himself 
and became, and Jesus became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hallelujah. And then it goes on how God exalted him. So Jesus is the perfect example of humility. Now, let's talk about how we can put humility in action. Okay? Let's talk about how we can put humility in action. Let me give you um, four ways that we can put humility to action. So for all those who are taking notes, I'm going to give you four ways you can start acting out your humility. Four ways, four things you could begin to do to act out your humility. Number one, avoid arguments. <laughs> Number one, avoid arguments. That is a way to demonstrate humility. Why? Because you're letting God fight your battles. You're letting God fight your battles. Uh-oh. See? I'm talking to somebody out there. Somebody is hearing this. Man, this is going to make somebody a better wife. This is going to make somebody a better husband, a better daughter, a better son. Pastor, how do I start demonstrating my humility moving forward? Come on, grab a hold of this, guys. We only got about six, seven more minutes. How do I begin to demonstrate humility? Number one, avoid arguments. Avoid arguments. Why? Let God fight your battles. Revenge is mine, saith the Lord. How do I stop fighting battles? How do I stop um, engaging in arguments? You ready for this? Walk away. <laughs> Walk away. Maybe maybe I, I could have just stopped right there and, and let y'all just think about that one. Because that one right there is powerful in and of itself. Okay, they saying, yes, sir. Um, Aaron Johnson says, I'm listening, sir. Aaron Davis, that's right there. Jesus is the perfect example of humility. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Keddy Moe was with me. He said, right on, Pastor. Okay, all right. Okay, Nia says, yes. Uh, Cheyenne said, that's it. Uh, Nia says, walk away. <laughs> amen. 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 Everybody say amen. All right. Cool. Cool. So just remember that if you take a notes, document it. If you're going to go back and watch it, that's cool too. All right. Um, number two, how can I start putting humility in, in action? We said, number one, avoid arguments. Number two, let people criticize you. <laughs> oh, man. Is this good, Pastor Nick? Yes. Let people criticize you. Be open to your own subordinates. Okay, so that, that's... that's um, or even people who are considered to be younger than you. Don't get defensive. Okay? Don't get defensive be open to when people criticize you be open that if your leaders criticize you be open if your friends or somebody equal to you criticize you be open if somebody even younger than you criticize you be open if your husband criticize you be open if your wife criticizes you be open if your child criticizes you it's an act of humility and pride is when you get defensive See, you should be humble in the heart, but notice how that pride kicks in your heart. I want you to start. I want you to start paying attention to these things. Be open to criticism. That is an act of humility. Number one, we said avoid arguments. Walk away. Walk away. Walk away. Humble yourself and walk away. Okay, number two, let people 
criticize you. Let people criticize you. It's okay. It's okay. Let them criticize you. Because humility welcomes criticism. Humility welcomes criticism. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Pride gets you defensive. That that's that. If it wasn't for pride, you wouldn't be defensive, because humility makes you have a quiet understanding. We're gonna work it out. You know, I don't know everything. God knows everything. I don't. I'm not. I'm not selfish anymore. I'm not focused on just getting my way. It's really not about my way anyway. It's about God's way. So when your heart is full of those things that I'm sharing with you, then it won't get defensive. But when your heart is void, empty of those things, when your when your heart is empty of consideration, understanding, and all that, you're going to be prideful. You're going to be defensive because ignorance is a breeding ground for pride. <laughs> ignorance is a breeding ground for pride. So if you don't know, you don't know. You don't know. Most most ignorant ignorant people are prideful people. Ignorant people are prideful people. You don't know what you don't know. Okay? So just think about when you were a sinner in the world. You didn't know all of these things that we're learning. Surrendering your life to God, humility, faith, faith, faith in Jesus, walking in love. You, you didn't understand those things. You were ignorant. So Pride could find its home in an empty house. That's why even when you read the scripture where it says the house was sweeped out clean and then they came, the demons came back and noticed that no one has filled the house. And then they brought seven more demons. They brought seven more demons. So, you know, yeah. But anyway, I don't want to get into all that. But again, the way you can demonstrate humility is avoiding arguments and letting people criticize you. Number three. Don't deny or dumb down your gifts. So many of you are gifted. Don't deny your gifts. Like we talked about yesterday. Don't run away from your calling. It's, it's arrogant of you. It's prideful of you to deny your calling, your gift, the gifts on your life. It's arrogant. It's prideful to deny the gifts and calling on your life. Okay. So don't dumb it down. Don't deny them. And uh, respect the gifts and the callings on your life. Amen. Number four. Okay. Number four. It's an act of humility to guard your speech. Okay. So this is going to be the last one for this morning. This is going to be the last one. Do me a favor. Please share. Okay. You're helping me, sir. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, do me a favor. Share this. This is the last one. I've only got maybe about a minute and a half left. Um, so share this. Share this. Share this. Share this. Okay. Somebody else need to hear this. Okay. Um, guard your, your speech. Guard your speech. That's an act of humility to guard your mouth. You, 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 you know, it's, it's not intelligent to just say everything that comes to your mind. It's not intelligent to say everything that comes to your thoughts. <laughs> it's humble of you to, because, you know, once it comes out your mouth, you cannot bring it back. And words, even though they lie to you, they say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words cannot hurt me. That's a lie. Everything is, is revolving around words. Words can hurt you. Words can destroy you. Words can actually kill you. Do you know when Jesus comes back and that he's not going to use anything physical to shoot the devil or anything? He's going to open his mouth and use his words. Jesus even said when he comes back, he said, by your words, will you be justified or by your words, you will be condemned. So words are powerful. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it, you know, enjoy the fruit, they, they will live thereby. So words are powerful. Words are powerful. You can't just if you're going to be humble as parents, 
You got to monitor and watch what you say to your kids. Because just like when some of, some of us grew up, people said things to us and it hurt us. Some of those things may still be with you to this day. So be careful of the things you say out your mouth because God has taken a record of everything. You got angels with you every day. No matter how you think, of, no matter what you think about yourself, God still sees you as valuable. He still sees you as important. He died for you. He gave his, he gave his only son for you. So he's not going to treat you fake just because you may want to act fake sometimes and act like God is not there. I'm on my own so I can say whatever I want to say. Up. No, God is not fake. He's faithful even when we're unfaithful. But I know that's not your story. You're not an unfaithful Christian. You wouldn't be on here if you was unfaithful. You're on here because you're faithful and you want to be more faithful and you're going to be more committed to God. And that's what you're here for. So that's why we're teaching you how to operate in humility. So let's just kind of do a recap as we about to wrap this on up. Let's do a recap as we wrap humility up. So one of the things we understand that humility is not a matter of an outward appearance, but it's an inward transformation. It's an issue of your heart. And so it's like a battle between humility and pride of the heart. And you are the one who determine who's going to win. Are you going to let pride win in your heart or are you going to let humility win in your heart? Pride says, you know what? I can't do this no more. I give up. But it really doesn't give up because what it's saying is I'm taking over. That's what pride really saying. Yeah, it make make you think you're you're giving up, but really it said pride said I'm taking over because it ain't no giving up. Somebody got to run you. You were designed to be ran by somebody. Either you're gonna be ran by God or you're gonna be ran by the devil. So the devil will deceive you and make you think you gave up and make you think you have control over your life. But if you examine the fruits, then what you've done is that you've you've allowed pride a demon spirit of pride to take over your body. Laziness is pride. So right there, you say, well, I'm not prideful. But if you're lazy, that's pride. It's pride to be, it's prideful to be lazy, to not work for God, to not serve, to not get up and make things happen. That's pride. The Bible says, see a man who is diligent in his work, he shall stand before kings and not men of low degree. Can you see that? <laughs> Glory to God. So, or like, like you all that are watching, you say, no, humility is going to take over my heart. That's what I choose. I choose humility because you may think, well, humility is something that something happens on its own. No, humility is something you do. You have to humble yourself. Okay. And so just like you're watching on here this morning, you're humbling yourself. You could be doing everything under the sun, doing whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it, however you want to do it. I don't got time for none of that. Just like me, it's 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 humble, it's 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 humility for me to study the things that God told me want me to study. Sometimes it's hard. I'm telling you right now. Sometimes it feels like a, a challenge to study some of the materials that God wants me to study. But it's like, okay, no, God, I'm humbling myself. I'm gonna humble myself. It's no different than a child. Who wants to play his video games, but you tell them, no, go clean your room or do your homework. What, what are they? If they do what you tell them to do, what are they doing? They are humbling themselves. If they don't do what you're telling them to do, they allowing pride to rise up in their heart. It's the same with us. You know, if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, then we're humbling ourselves. You, you all, we all know what we're supposed to be doing. God is not without a witness in our life. <laughs> God is not without a witness in our life. God is not without making things clear what he expects from us. Come on. Come on. Yeah. So we all have an idea of what God intends for us to do to humble ourselves. We just have to begin to do it. And as we do, um, God will bless us. He, he will exalt us. Okay. And then um, we talked about the story of Saul. How he was so prideful, how all he cared about is what his elders in Israel thought about him. He never worshiped God for God. That's all he cared about. He had this outward humility, but inwardly he was full of pride. He demanded his man of God to respect him. You're going to respect me. You, you, you need to respect me. You need to know who I am. Do you know who I am? And, and that was prideful of him. And then he ended up losing his position. So. All of us have to humble ourselves. All of us 
have to come humble. You know, we read this. We read the example of Jesus, how he says, come learn of me. He says, come, let me show you. And then we read about how Jesus said he didn't seek no reputation. And, you know, a lot of times our flesh can be eager for reputation. We could be eager to be seen. <laughs> you know, um, and then the final thought is this. How do we begin to demonstrate humility? What are the three ways we could start demonstrating humility? OK, um, so chalk like, come on, sir, while somebody has to run to run you. That's right. Aaron John said, come on, sir. Yeah, somebody has to run. You. So the three ways that we learned this morning how to um, act in humility. Number one, and this is a good one for the ladies right here. This is a good one for the ladies. All the ladies avoid arguments. We just talked about words this morning too. You just talked about words this morning? Mm -hmm. For real? Mm -hmm. Wow, look at that. Avoid arguments. You know, sometimes, lady, y'all could be up for a good argument. You'd be like, okay, I ain't had one of these in a minute. I'm, I'm ready for this. <laughs> avoid arguments. Okay. Number two. Hey, hey, come on, man. This one for you, man. Hello, man. Hello. Are you out there? This for all my men. Let people accept criticism. It's hard sometimes for a man to allow their wife to criticize them. Call them out on something. You know, address them how they may act around a young lady or something like that. Correct them on you know, how they may have done certain things. Accept criticism, man. Learn to accept criticism. Uh, we already know number three was don't deny or dumb down your gifts. And number four, this is for all of us. Number four for all of us, learn to guard your speech. Huh? Learn to guard your speech. Let your speech be lovely and gentle. Don't scold people with your mouth. You ever seen a movie where somebody dump a hot pot of coffee on somebody or dump a hot bowl of water on someone? That's scalding them. So don't allow your words to have that same kind of effect on people. Okay, let's read this last verse as we wrap this up this morning. Ephesians 4.29. Ah, I read that this morning. Get out of here. I did. You read it this morning? Uh-huh, from the Amplified. Okay, the Lord's speaking to somebody. Wow. I, you know, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Wow, you read this exact verse. Ephesians 4, 29. Look at that. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of building somebody up. So the question is, or humility is, begin to use your words to build people up. Am I, am I putting you down this morning? Am I destroying you? No. My words are being used to build you up. Use your speech to build your house up. Tell your children, guys, you are amazing. Guys, you are awesome. Or whatever. But use your words to build up. That it may minister grace unto the hearer. So you're supposed to be using your words for the purpose of strengthening those who listen to you. That's what you're supposed to be using your words for. And that's what's happening to every person that is watching right now. You're being strengthened. You're being helped. You're being educated. You're being encouraged. You're being blessed. You are God's children. 
you humble yourself today, you avoid arguments, you walk away, starting today, you're like, I'm not on that frequency anymore. You know, and I even learned when I was studying Proverbs this morning, when I was studying the Bible this morning in Proverbs, that basically arguments come as a result of ignorance. Arguments come as a result of ignorance. When people are ignorant and void of knowledge, they flare out in anger. And let me tell you one of the key things that ignorant people lack. The reason why they have outbursts of anger. They lack the knowledge of patience. They lack the knowledge of patience. People who have outbursts in anger, they lack patience. They lack pa That's why they are short-tempered. They are easily flared because they lack patience. If you were patient, you wouldn't be short temper. Patience says, I can endure longer. I have methods on how to get through these things. So, yeah, all about humility this morning. Use your speak. To build your house up. That's right. That's right. Praise God. Well, that's all for today, guys. Wow. Um, today's the last day? No, tomorrow. Okay. All right. I get my days mixed up. We got one more day tomorrow. We got one more day of discipleship class tomorrow, Friday, 5 a.m. prayer, and then 10 a.m., 8 a.m. with the ladies, 10 a.m. discipleship. And, yep, so forth and so on. Praise God. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap this on up. Um, as we always do, give everybody an opportunity to give. So see, be a blessing. Um, the giving links will come up. We'll pray over the offering, and then we're going to go ahead and wrap this up for the night. So anyone who need to bring their tithes, their offerings into the house of God, you are more than welcome to do that. This morning, the giving links are coming up right now, and we're going to pray. Father, thank you for this awesome message on humility. Thank you. Thank you for all the beautiful people that were able to take out the time to hear, to grow, to learn in the ways of humility. Thank you for feeding us. Thank you for feeding all of us, Lord. Thank you for not allowing us to go without knowledge and understanding. And thank you for the people that are so humble to receive and to learn and to grow. And like, yes, Lord, I want to be more educated. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. And we pray multiplication over people's finances. In Jesus' name, amen. And so I'm looking forward to getting the Bible college back cranked up. My, my, my desire is to have it back up by August, September of this year as we move into our new building. And, um, but the difference is, the Bible college is going to be during the day. It's going to be in the morning. The Bible college is going to be in the morning. And so, um, yeah. So, yeah. But we'll talk further about that. And if you have any concerns, any questions, just let me know. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. Love you guys. Thank you all for joining. May God be with you today. May you have a, a mercy day. Today is a mercy day. Expect mercy today. I decree and declare it over your life right now in Jesus Christ's name that you receive mercy. Father, we thank you for mercy today, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today to be a day of mercy, a day of favor in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.